Hi there, Christine here. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about a few of the materials that I use for watercolor painting in the field and some of their pros and cons and why I've chosen them. Now, there's lots of opinions on materials, um, but these are just um, one of the kinds of materials that I use and I recommend for uh, getting started uh, painting in the field. So the first one is this water brush and um, it's wonderful for the field. It's pretty much the only option for using in the field if you are going to try to be portable. And that's what I really suggest is portability. So if you want to paint uh, while you're hiking um, at a picnic table like I'm at right now, or if you want to paint with um, you know, going to a zoo or aquarium or natural history museum, or even painting while traveling like on a plane, this is what you've got to have. So this brush is filled with water and you can just fill it with your, your trusty uh, container or in the creek nearby like I'm at right now. And you just fill that up and you take the top off and you squeeze it a bit to get going. These do come in a few sizes and they can be a round point or a flat point. Uh, but I recommend this sort of a little bit larger size because it does come to a nice uh, small point that you can um, easily use for details or you can push it down harder and get uh, bigger coverage. So, um, but the cons are uh, it does tend to paint a little bit too wet since it's got the water in here. So you want to make sure you don't squeeze it too much. Um, and uh, it does help to dry it a bit on a towel uh, first, like a bandana or a paper towel like this. And it does only come in a couple of sizes. All right, so that's, that's the water brush, really indispensable for painting in the field. All right, the second thing is you need something to uh, draw and paint on. And um, this is one of the things I recommend. Uh, it's uh, basically um, the, the size uh, you can uh, have uh, variable sizes, although this is a great size that's um, just about the biggest size you'd want for being able to fit into your purse or backpack for a day of sketching. Uh, and it can go a little bit smaller too, but this is a good size, the seven by 10. And uh, I recommend mixed media. And that means that uh, you can draw on it uh, with pencils and pens, and you can also paint on it. Uh, so it's kind of a medium weight uh, paper. Now, uh, you could use watercolor paper, and I do sometimes, but uh, that is heavier and more expensive. And so sometimes, uh, you know, people would maybe not be as uh, likely to really use it and experiment with it because it's more expensive and kind of more precious. So uh, I suggest getting, you know, a cheaper pad like this that you can just fill up with uh, experimenting with uh, your mixing your colors and your textures and just not being afraid to, to paint in it because it's uh, cheap enough so that you won't treat it so preciously and feel like each page has to be art, right? Um, the cons are though that it does a wrinkle to, to some extent uh, and um, so uh, also if you paint uh, too wet it's going to really wrinkle like this. Uh, but that's okay, I think um, that's fine. And um, because it's thinner and it doesn't have the the, the, the thickness and texture of watercolor paper, uh, it doesn't tend to uh, absorb and, and move the watercolors in as nice of a way. But uh, really on balance, um, this medium weight mixed media paper I think is better than thin sketching paper or thick watercolor paper uh, for the field. All right, and um, when you do start a new um, a new journal like this, you're going to want to make sure. Uh, I like to have a, a table of contents page left blank in the in the front, so that I can add page numbers later and uh, say what's on each page. Okay, so that's what I recommend there for the paper. That's what I use. Okay, uh, next is your watercolors and. 
Uh, there are so many opinions about watercolors, and so this is just one of the sets that I recommend, especially to begin with, okay? So if you're not sure if you really want to use watercolors, if you're not sure if that's your medium, you don't want to commit too much money, yet uh, this is a great set. Uh, pretty much anything by Windsor & Newton is, is great, uh, but this uh, Cotman uh, version is their more student grade and so it's um, it's more affordable. This set was only around twenty dollars whereas if you get a more professional watercolor set those can be fifty to a uh, hundred and fifty dollars for a set. So you don't want to really um, put that kind of money in especially in the beginning if you're not quite sure if watercolors are the medium for you. So um, so I recommend, no, no matter what, getting a set that's uh, a field set like this with a little tray and a, and a um, you know, you can fold it up and take it with you in the field. All right, and so that's what you want. And uh, you want something that doesn't have too many colors. I suggest maybe, you know, a, a, a 12 color set is nice. Uh, you don't want to have too many colors because then you'll just spend too much time thinking about what color to use and it's better to have fewer colors so that you really practice um, mixing your colors, really getting to know them. And so like this version has uh, warm and cool uh, versions of, of each primary and a couple of, um, of browns here so you don't have to mix those what they call tertiaries uh, because that takes a lot more time and you'd be using a lot more paint uh, mixing in the tray here if you had to mix your <clears throat> your own browns. Okay, and um, so this set even comes with a, a little uh, brush, which is nice to have a secondary brush. Uh, this, of course, doesn't have the, the water in it like the water brush did, but if you're already painting and you've got a little water in your palette like here, uh, you can just uh, wet it a little bit and paint with that. So this is nice. What a great deal to have um, 12 colors in a box uh, with uh, a brush as well. So there are some pros and cons to this um, specific uh, watercolor set I recommend, the, the Cotman Windsor & Newton. Uh, one of them is, for me, it's a little bit hard to, to open. Uh, so that's one. I just have a little bit difficult time opening that. Uh, another one is that there's a lot of packaging that kind of takes a while. I'm not sure if other watercolor sets are like this. They probably are. I don't remember. But uh, you've got to take these little um, packages off with a knife. And so there's a lot of packaging there. <laughs> another drawback is it comes with a fairly useless white. So there's a few things you could do there. Uh, you could take it out knife here and by another color to replace that uh, I would suggest uh, a darker color like a, a Payne's gray or a neutral tint or perhaps uh, a purple since um, well a purple that you experiment with finding that you can't mix with the, the warm and cool uh, reds and blues so you could do that uh, in the meantime, if you don't have more watercolors, you could also just put some water in there as you're painting and it could be a little bit of extra place for water. You could also add a little sponge here and that would be a great way um, to just you know, dip and clean your brush. Okay, so there's a few things you can, you can do there. Now, um, an, another drawback, but kind of a good part too, is that you can, um, well, let's see, moving back. Uh, another pro that's also a con is that uh, these, these uh, watercolors come inside these boxes. Now, you should notice that there are, uh, there are labels to the boxes. can't remember if I told you that already, but there's, there's labels that you want to um, notice and write down and there's also uh, labels here that tell you the exact color and it's good to learn those colors and to make a, a color cheat sheet so you know uh, the colors that you have in your palette. But anyway it comes with this extra box and there's a few things you can do with that. You can either um, you can either let me show you here 
put a little glue in the bottom of that, but not too much. A little glue in the bottom of that and glue that in, okay? Or you can do what I like to do is take them out and reuse them. And what I do is I add uh, magnetic tape to it. Uh, there's a sticky side and a magnetic side. And I just tape that here. And then I can um, use all of those in another box. And what I do is I use one of these magnetic Altoids boxes. And so then I have a whole new set of paints. Let me check here. There we go. Uh, I have a whole new set of paints that I can take with me. Uh, so I can either um, have a, an additional set that's different colors than this, uh, or even gouaches, which are an opaque watercolor. Those are nice to have out in the field. Uh, or it can be the same set, and uh, one of them can be a travel set that I take with me and that I use in the car um, and always bring with me. Uh, and this one stays at home. I could do that as well. So that's a neat thing that you can do with those uh, extra boxes, okay? Uh, at any rate, whether you use the box or not, what you're going to want to do is once you unpackage all of these, is um, another con actually, is that these will just fall right out unless you kind of glue them in like I have. And basically you just glue them in with water like this. And so you just wet the bottom here and you just push it in, either in the box or uh, that comes out or in this other box. And then those will stay in there pretty good. Okay, well I think I've gone over a bit of the um, materials that I use and the pros and cons of each, the pros and cons of the, the water brush and of um, uh, this journal and of this set of uh, Cotman watercolors. Now there will always be pros and cons to what other materials you use and you just have to decide for yourself um, whether the balance is worth it. And um, as you sketch and paint more in the field you'll probably uh, change what you uh, have or uh, buy additional things and experiment with those and use some things for some purposes and other things for other purposes. Um, Okay, so I think that's about it for my uh, basic uh, tools that I use and the pros and cons of, uh, of each one. Okay, thanks for joining me and uh, have fun uh, sketching and painting in the field.